Thank you for listening to the Allender Center podcast. I'm Dr. Dan Allender. And I'm Rachel Clinton Chen. We're fiercely committed to providing hope and healing to a fragmented world. And restoration for the heart. Thank you for joining us. Let's get this conversation started. Happy New Year again. Well, it's not quite a new New Year, but it's still, it's still new. It's a brand yeah, it's spanking new. crazy New Year. Yes, it is. <laughs> Well, as we jump in and and follow from where we left off, talking about the reality of how do we shape a year? Uh, how, how do we shape days, weeks, months, and this year in a direction uh, that at least by the end of the year, uh, we can say as Psalm 27 comes to an end, that I did not despair because I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And that's our desire, that as you think about what the year 2022 will be, again, may it be that there are just all sorts of good things for you, your family, your world. But I think we can also say uh, that 2022 uh, is going to be the year of midterm elections, uh, we already live uh, in a world under immense threat. Uh, I think a threat with regard to uh, the disease of COVID, uh, certainly a bizarre and horrible flu season. Uh, the reality that I think there are multiple threats to democracy. We're, we're living in a fear-based, traumatized era. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of despair. Uh, I just uh, had a significant conversation with a good friend who um, just got fired. Uh, and he, I won't go into the details other than uh, he is a really good man who did really good work, but didn't resolve the heightened sense of despair that the organization he's with uh, has experienced. And he's being scapegoated and fired because... Mm -hmm. Uh, I think because we live in a bizarre and wicked era. Uh, and so when we begin to look at the fact there are threats, there is despair, and there is just an incredible amount of polarization, rage, self-righteousness, contempt, blame shifting. Take all those words to mean it's a mean day. So I don't think this year... Uh, with everything from inflation uh, to questions about who will have significant input with regard to governmental processes, all I can say is we are living in an era of overwhelming depletion, massive confusion. And what I would say at a very deep personal level for many of us, a lot of loneliness uh, we had a taste of kind of coming back into community. And then with Omicron and other disease processes, maybe a return to some degree uh, of isolation. But with all that, the year is not going to be easy. It's not going to get better as much as we would desire and wish. So it becomes a thousand times more important that we do the work of creating what we can to bring rhythms and rituals with great intent of goodness for ourselves and for others. Mm -hmm. So with that. Yes, I think it's a turning away a bit for me, away from the news. And I hear Jesus say, take care, take care. And they're very, there's, a myriad of ways in which I can take care, not only every day, but really every morning, every afternoon. And so that's where I'm hoping the rituals, the rhythms, the intentionality with my choices allow me to hear Jesus say, take care, and also to take care. 
with myself and with you and with our family and our friends. Well, and start with this. How'd you hear Jesus say that to you? Oh, I don't know. I just, it's just a, I just heard it and it stays with me. Take care. And it means, oh, so many, those two words, you could talk for an hour on what it means. And, um, and I think with that, though, there is a scripture that I like, Colossians 3, 14. And the most important piece of clothing you must wear is love. Love is what binds us all together in perfect harmony. And living with you, Dan, <laughs> we are living really close together in ways that we didn't have the opportunity, really, to ever live before. And so... If I don't put on the most important article of clothing, which is love, our days are not going to be filled with care or with hope or with peace. And I think that's an important uh, direction where we have to stand firm and, and grow deeper roots in. Well, and I think part of what I asked when I said, how did you come to that is, both of us have at least something of the rhythm of asking Jesus, particularly at the beginning of a year, but it's a daily process of asking Jesus, like, what do you think? Uh, the capacity to actually hear Jesus speak. Uh, I know it's a debate. I know there are people who differ, but I believe Jesus is loquacious. He loves to speak. He loves to speak through uh, the reality of what could be called general revelation. He speaks through the Word of God, but he also has the capacity to actually speak to our souls so that we hear. But that requires uh, two core things. One is time to ask mm -hmm. and the heart to wait. Mm -hmm. So do you want to hear? And will you actually make no demands uh, upon God to speak? but actually let your heart receive what it is, impressions, direct words, uh, something that comes from a book, a movie, uh, a comment that somebody makes uh, that's sitting near you uh, on public transportation. But that sense is we need to be able at the beginning of a year to hear what Jesus has for us. And as we each did that, you came to this category of care, be care. Mm -hmm. full. Mm -hmm. And I think the way most people hear that is caution. Mm -hmm. Careful. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it's so much more. I think I think the scriptures say that our bodies are the holy temple, the Holy Spirit. And I think we're taking care of our bodies better. I would Zoom have the opportunity of 8 a.m., yoga, where I'm taking care of my joints, my bones, my feet, my wrists. We do things that keep all moving parts moving and stretched. And it it's, I feel the condom, the commendation of God saying, this is good because you need to take care of your body. So I love the beginning of that. Yeah. And I would, I would actually say, Though it's a rhythm, for you, it's part of the ritual where you attend, you attune to what you hear the Spirit bringing to you as you bring your body mm -hmm. into an engagement. I think there are some people who do yoga, and, and it's great. Uh, but I, I've heard you speak and mm -hmm. watched you at, and one or two times tried to video you to put on, on Instagram and got in a lot of trouble when I did that. But nonetheless, you know, the ability to see you actually breathing in and out, not just the directions uh, of your instructor, but actually the goodness of God. So there is something about that. Taking ass. that time. And plus, I'm always looking out our window. And oh, my goodness, to watch the birds, the different birds, the seasons change. I'm I'm like I start my morning with a cup of coffee looking out and I'm looking out the same way for that. So it's really a time of being with God and creation. Well, when I asked Jesus uh, at, at the end of the year, what 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 words, what direction, what thoughts do you have? And 
I can tell you in the past, there have been times where I asked that question and it was, I heard nothing. I just heard a, a gray, dark sky. Uh, and, uh, and then two or three days later, something may come. Uh, it may have taken days upon days of returning to that question. But this was one of those moments where it came so quickly. Uh, and I heard him say, clarity. Hmm. Wow. And it went, really? Like clarity about, it goes, clarity and simplicity. Mm-hmm. And I must admit that I did not find my heart go, oh, yes, Jesus. <laughs> I, I live in a world uh, of trauma. Uh, I live in an organization that deals with trauma, but also, as a cost, experiences a lot of our own trauma. Uh, and it just gets muddy, thick, confusing. There's just times where I feel like I am planted in ambiguity uh, and in some ways uh, ambivalence. And when he said clarity, I'm like, uh, about what? My future, about writing, about, about, about. Uh, And the word was simplicity. Well, that's going to be hard for you. (laughs) (laughs) I I wish you could see uh, 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 my dear audience, uh, my wife's Playful and kind, but mawkish face. Yeah, I think so. Say more. What, what, why do you think it'll be difficult? I don't know. You're very complex in, in thinking and in doing life. And, you uh, you know, you're you're complex person. So simplicity <laughs> right there is putting you in a, a, a unusual situation. Yeah, well. I'm excited. I, I, I'm not. And I think, <laughs> I think that's I, I, that's a bit of a lie. I am mostly not excited, but I think there is something within me that goes, I want to see what that does. Mm -hmm. If I truly believe he spoke, and I do believe he spoke, if that intersection of clarity and simplicity, Mm. what might that bring in terms of choices? So as we begin to move toward the issue of intentionality, hearing Jesus creates then, well, what am I to do with this? How am I, how am I to bring new worlds to play in my world? What am I, what am I needing to let go? Mm -hmm. What do I need to begin to bring? And as simply as that's put, it's really consistent with what Paul speaks often about, put on, put off. Mm -hmm. What you were describing from the Colossians passage is that notion of put on righteousness, take off unrighteousness, put on faith take off doubt. Mm. So there is, in many ways, maybe it's too simplistic, but maybe it's also the core of simplicity. What do I need to put on? Mm -hmm. What do I need to take off? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that became clear is, like, as a result of this surgery, uh, I come to about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the Mm -hmm. afternoon, and I am one weary boy. You're sore. And I am sore, tired, and I'm not thinking well. So I think one of the things that has become clear that we've at least begun to put words to is we're not using technology well. We're not using the space of the end of the day well. Mm -hmm. I mean, normally if I'm done at four or five o'clock, I come back over to the home. I hang out with you for a bit. But often that's when I then go to email. Uh And that's when I begin the process of doing 2030 email to see if I can clean out whatever the day has had. Yeah, and it doesn't really put you in a happy mood a lot of times. No. (laughs) Yeah, so I I love that we've been talking about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, like put our phones away, keep the computer closed, and um, talk, read, um, create possibly listen to music, maybe go for another walk. Just let's um, let's clear out the debris. Yeah. And it, uh, as odd as it is, I in my office, I have rituals about how I end the day. Um, it, whomever I've spoken to uh, uh, during that day, um, friends, colleagues, clients, I, I, I want to 
hold them in memory. And then I want to bring the cross between that person and me and send back to them their warfare, but also send back to them the Spirit's blessing. So there's an ending Mm -hmm. that I feel really good about. I want to keep that. But then how could it be that I go from my garage office about 20 seconds at the most into my home and then I lose what I've just gained, and that is I've ended well, but now I'm beginning in a way that does not lead to the goodness of God in the land of the living, because I'm back in the complexity. I am back in anything but simplicity. So I think that's where, as I line the year, and I mean by that, moving toward, and that's what intentionality to me is. It is a moving toward what you know will bring goodness to you and to others. Now, by not answering email, Frankly, I also am aware I'm going to disappoint a lot more people. Uh, And in that disappointment, I don't know if a lot of people are going to feel a great deal of joy that they didn't get an answer to what they wrote uh, earlier in the day. But in that, I think what I've already begun to hear, and this isn't so much from Jesus, it's just me pondering Mm -hmm. the reality of what simplicity holds, is I need to be clear about what is my yes. Mm. And what is my no? Yeah. And to honor yes mm-hmm. and not complicate it by retracting it, to let no be no, open to change, but letting those simplistic categories actually shape how I proceed into the year. I know. In which with you being a workaholic, now that you're saying you want to no longer be that, that's part of the simplicity. I think that means, all right, well, we go sit in the garden and we don't even, you know, are we, or I, this is what I say a lot of times, go out on the hammock and look at the sky, feel the breeze, you know, be a human being. I think, I think we need to be a human being more often than in our head getting things done. I think that's how we want to grow our later latter years, whatever is correct, by, and and just that clothing of kindness. If it's the two of us in a house, we need that clothing on for our harmony and our hearts and our well-being. Yeah. So what do you think you need to bring with intent for this year to be one in which you, you experience more of the goodness of God in the land of the living? Well, I do, um, I know it's important for me to be with people. So I have a prayer group that's been going on for 23 years. I have a Bible study that's been going on that long. And I've joined a new book club. I need people. And I think a lot of this has come from um, two of my dear friends within eight days lost their husbands um, to death. And it was Uh, It still shocks me, but it's like I need people. I cannot just be cloistered with you. And I, you know, that's what I feel we're called to be, the hands and feet of Jesus to others. So I want to continue that. Yeah. And again, as you think about what that brings you beyond the obvious communion, connection, We are relational beings, and we all, to some degree, have been deprived of the normal structures of being able to just have oxytocin. I mean, when we go to a theater, to a movie theater, I mean, the research is uh, pretty darn clear. The reason people used to go to movie theaters is because the pleasure of watching a film with others increases our oxytocin, therefore causes a rise in our dopamine. In other words, just being with people who are strangers and laughing or feeling fear in a theater intensifies the pleasure of watching that film. So we've all been oxytocin deprived, which is why many of us uh, have struggled with our weight or our drinking or sexually because We're not getting the basic dollop of oxytocin rise 
that we were made for. And on the other side of that, we've become more introverted. So it actually is harder to figure out what shoes to put on or what clothes to wear. Or actually, it was so time efficient to have all these meetings on Zoom. You know, now it's taking more time. So I think it's not all easy, the changes, but it's desire. But sometimes that's what I need to I need to push myself not to be so introverted. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things we both named is that we've got exquisite, long, long term friends uh, from seminary, from college, elementary from, school, from elementary school. That not you, that's you, not me. Uh, that we we need individually and corporately to be with in a way that the longing has increased to a point of almost craving to be in the presence of people who have held us, cared for us, been with us through thick and thin, and I mean like four and five and six, maybe even seven decades. Mm -hmm. So that sensibility of, I don't really have a whole lot of desire to travel. Uh, We've had that privilege a great deal, but if we need to travel to be with these friends, there is a sense in which that needs to be honored. And therefore, even at the beginning of the year, we're starting to be asking these friends, when are we going to meet? Where are we going to meet? What do you want to do? And let's make it happen. Uh, Again, there may be things that stand in the way who knows what's going to happen with regard to COVID. But nonetheless, there are ways that we can begin to hold the future with that intentionality to not let the last two years dictate and determine entirely how we will proceed into the year 2022. Any other things that just hold for you as to this is what I need to bring into this year for the goodness of God to rise? Well, I just think it Again, that um, take care, be full of care, um, put on the clothing of love. I mean, that's also for our family, our children, our grandchildren, which we haven't even brought up. That is part of intentionality um, that, you know, there are so many choices we have to make to cut things out so that we do have time for what we want to be intentional about. Yeah. And I think if we put words as aging couple, Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the energy uh, and not just because of the COVID era, but we don't, because of our age, have the same level of capacity that we would have had five to 20 years ago. So learning to say there is a dying that needs to occur before you actually die, Uh, a letting go. A choosing to say, I can no longer give myself over to these particular either people or processes or problems in the way that I may have even even 18 months ago. And that takes wisdom to figure out what to let go. You know. Yeah, I, I, I think with that, I would also say it takes courage to fail. Uh-huh. Um, so the, the wisdom to know what to do also has to have the other side to say, we know we have to cut things out. And I think the reality of saying we, we, are, we are going to end our day between four and five o'clock so that your phone goes off. And I'm looking at you square in the eye. It's going to be very different. Yes. Uh-huh. We'll, we'll let you know how this works out. Well, and, and, but it's and exciting it, too. Yeah. Well, and it, it holds again that prospect of we don't know what will occur by doing it, but we simply know that we can't continue doing what we've done. Mm-hmm. So intentionality isn't just toward the end of something good, mm-hmm. it's also a statement of a, a, a resistance, a defiance, a, a hell no. Hell no, I just can't keep doing this again and again. Well, once you say no, the implicit demand is you you are called to say yes to something else, Mm -hmm. unless you just plan to sit there and do nothing. So if we actually stop Uh email, phone calls, 
texting. Maybe we can write poetry together. Remember, we did that a couple of times. We liked that. I don't know. I think, too, maybe it would be fun to do some art, you know, paint. I I mean, yeah. I, you know, again. Or I'll do it without you. I mean, it doesn't have to be with you, right? I'm thinking maybe, of course, we hardly ever go out in the evenings. <laughs> well, yeah, but that that playground of being able to go, wow, um, to paint with you would, uh, that would be ridiculous. But uh, why not try? But where we played with poetry together, uh, particularly with a, a dear friend, Sarah Steinke, who led us in a process of learning to write mm -hmm. and write individually, but also to write together like that immediately. I know. We said we would try that every month, and that was two years ago. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> again, even naming that, it's like, oh, how did something so sweet that we enjoyed get lost in the debris of our efficiency, my efficiency and busyness? So I think, again, if I come back to what I've heard Jesus say, simplicity, clarity. I still am wrestling at the beginning of this year, wondering where that's going to go. Yet, just by you using that phrase, like we could write poetry together. And immediately when you said that, like I remembered sitting on the couch, each of us writing and then eventually reading and then laughing and then playing with it again. It was really, really amazing. Maybe even more amazing than hearing about your bizarre dreams. <laughs> Maybe we need to get a poetry coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually have uh -huh. someone who could fill that particular gifting and role. Well, as we come to an end, um, what we are, again, inviting you to is, will you spend even a bit more time asking what rhythms are part of your life that have been imposed upon you out of a sense of necessity or inevitability. And whatever those are, you might keep them, but they will be kept out of choice, that is, out of intent, rather than out of demand. And there, something gets sweeter in and of itself. It just gets sweeter when you say, well, we'll need to get up earlier if we're going to have a 45-minute walk. That means we're going to have to go to bed earlier and not do X, Y, or Z. So if you uh, want to walk with your beloved uh, and have a time to talk about dreams, uh, uh, the day as to what's ahead, and psalms and pray, uh, I'm pretty sure on most occasions you can make that 45 minutes work for you uh, and for your beloved. But what it will require is the capacity to say, and certain things will have to end for us to be able to do that. Can you bear the loss in order to create the gain? And if not, then it's just going to happen that you roll into the year and what was, what will be, will then become your future. And that, oh gosh, I don't know how to put it more bluntly. Uh, it is a hellish trap. It's a rut. So we want to disrupt the rut to create rhythms that have sweetness for you but also to invite you back into the category of what are the rituals that you individually and you corporately with those you love create in order to have a deepening, grounding, but movement toward awe and toward gratitude. And again, we didn't talk about it before. We didn't talk about our evening ritual. That's new. Did, is that what you're thinking? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, since Dan's surgery, um, it's been so delightful to um, get him comfortable and ready to sleep in his recliner since he can't lie down for a few months on, with his shoulder. But it was very difficult the very first night he came home. It was an outpatient surgery, but to be able to hold his face and kiss him on the forehead and pray for him has just become such a beautiful part of our evening 
each night. It is. I, and it, it's, it's like, how, how do we do that if I'm not in a recliner? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can figure it out. I, I, if so. But the idea mm-hmm. of having you bless me, touch me, my face, and then, it, it, again, it, it's it's not to the point of anointing with oil, but that's what it's felt like. It's like having the oil of your delight running down my beard. That sweet image from the Psalms and from the Hebrew Bible, I, it's been one of those gifts where, I, I mean, I cannot wait to get back into bed with you. Uh, the recliner, by the time I think I come to an end, I want to burn it. But, but but let me say this, you are a priceless man. I don't know a sweeter way to go into this year than to think in terms of to have the one I love more than anyone on this earth bless me with being priceless, but also to touch my face, to pray, and then to give me a kiss on my forehead. Uh, it is it is one of our rituals that I don't know how we'll do once we happen to be both back in bed. But it is something that um, has been the sweetest gift of the last three weeks. And I anticipate that there is something about that that will take us to one of our deaths, uh, that there will be a blessing, there will be a face held and a kiss offered to be able to say, we have known the goodness of our God. In the land of the living. And may it be for you. May it be your desire. May it be your intent. And may it be something you risk losing in order to gain. Center podcast is produced by the Seattle School of Theology and Psychology. If you'd like more information about the Allender Center, you can look at theallendercenter.org.